Hello everyone, it's Nina. Thanks for joining me today for a new video. I'm really excited to be bringing you this project. It's using new products from Simon Says Stamps December release, which has just been revealed and has a lot of beautiful dyes in it. There are also other products too, including some stamps, stencils, there's some beautiful glitter papers, velvet cardstock, so many cool things, even tools. So in today's project, I'm going to make a edge to edge shaker card, but I'm gonna hot foil on top of the plastic. This is a fun technique, I've done this before. It's a really cool way to step up your edge to edge shaker card and it creates a stunning effect. So I have one of the new stencils from the December release here. This is the XL Snowflake, such a fun, pretty pattern. And I have a piece of stamp packaging that I'm going to use to create my edge to edge shaker pocket. So I'm gonna lay the stencil onto my plastic and tape the two together so that way nothing shifts as I do a bit of stenciling. We're gonna be using paste today to create the transfer of the snowflake onto our plastic. And the paste that I'm using is ThermoWeb Transfer Gel. Now I'm actually using the original formula of Transfer Gel. There's actually the new formula called Transfer Gel Duo, but I have quite a few of these Transfer Gel jars in my stash, so I'm trying to use them up. So basically what I'm trying to say is that either the Transfer Gel Original or the Transfer Gel Duo will work. You just wanna apply that through the stencil and then let that dry. Once it's dry, it'll be completely clear. As you can see, mine is now. That means we're ready to foil it. So I'm going to take a piece of deco foil. This is a gorgeous new purple color from ThermoWeb and I'm going to put this inside of my carrier sheet. I'm going to transfer this with my mini mink machine, but if you don't have a mink, you can also use a laminator. I like using one of the lower settings on my machine. I find that I don't get as much overfoiling on plastic. So I'm gonna use setting one for this. And I'll just run this through the machine. There's no shim, it's just the plastic and the foil inside of the carrier sheet. Now I can remove the foil from the plastic and you can see we have this stunning design now transferred onto that stamp packaging. This did not warp the plastic, it didn't melt it. It is a beautifully transferred design and it looks so cool. So let's set this aside. We're gonna do a bit of ink smushing now. I love oxide ink smushing and my favorite way to smush is onto white glossy cardstock from Simon's Stamp. So I'm gonna take these oxide inks and you saw the colors that I'm going to use. I'm gonna interchangeably smush these onto my white glossy cardstock. I am using a half sheet here because I wanna get two panels out of this one ink smush design. So it gives me an extra panel to use for something else. And in between each of the smushing layers, I'm going to dry as much as possible. I'm not gonna dry it fully, but I'm gonna dry quite a bit of it. So that way, not all the colors are going to run. I do want some mixing, but I don't want everything to mix. So I wanna have that definition of color. You'll notice I have put the ink onto a stamp storage pocket from Simon's Stamp. I find that this works really well because it allows me to control where I place the ink. I've talked about this before. I don't like putting the ink onto my work surface because I can't see where I'm putting it then onto my project. So I find this is the way that works best for me. Once I finished making my background, it's ready to be used as a background, but it's kind of dull, isn't it? Well, oxide inks work that way. They oxidize when water comes in contact with them, but you can rejuvenate those colors and remove the oxidization from your background by taking some Distress Microglaze. So I have put an ink blending tool and a sponge dauber together and I'm dabbing into the microglaze and applying it onto my project. Once I have covered the paper with the microglaze, I'm gonna buff off any excess and you can see how vibrant the colors have become again. Now all that oxidation is gone and we have these stunning colors. I also made another version with a few different other shades. I mixed some colors up and got a different look. As you can see, if you play around with this, you're gonna get a completely different look every time. So I liked the really bright one best and I decided that was the one I was gonna go with with my project. So I'm just gonna decorate it by splattering on some Shimmer Mist from Brutus Monroe. And I did also pull in some mica spray from Tim Holtz. I splattered this onto the background and that's gonna create this really beautiful design. Now this will take a bit of time to dry because it is on a glossy surface. So I'm just gonna set this aside and in a couple hours it was ready to be cut down. So here are my pieces. I picked one of them out and we're going to start adhering our plastic onto it. I have some Simon Says Stamp Terrific tape here and I'm just covering all four edges of my background with the tape. Once I have the tape applied, I'll remove the release paper on three sides only, leaving the release paper still attached to one side. 
This will allow me to fold over the edges of the plastic into the exposed adhesive. We're creating a pocket here, so we need to make sure that the sequins will stay securely inside by having that adhesive around all the edges that will ensure that everything is completely sealed. That final edge that we haven't yet sealed up is where we're going to dump all of our sequins inside. I use some gems and also sequins. Both of these are clear. I didn't want anything colorful in this because we have a lot of color going on with the foil in the background. I thought clear would be a nice separation for those two. Once I checked how much was included inside of my shaker and I was happy with it, I sealed that last edge up and then I'm covering the backside with more terrific tapes so that way I could adhere it straight down onto my project. So now I have my A2 card covered with the panel and all I need now is a sentiment. So there are new sentiment dies included in the December release and I really liked the basic trio for this project. I'm using the word thanks. I stacked up two white die cuts together and then I'll put one more final layer on top that I cut from Simon Says Stamp Silver Matte Cardstock. This is, adds a really nice pretty shine that looks really good off of that snowflake. I glued that down with liquid glue and then I'm going to attach a small sentiment strip underneath to finish off the greeting. And there you have it. This gorgeous edge to edge shaker card is stunning. It's such a fun technique to use and enhance your edge to edge shaker cards with a fun foiled effect. I hope you were inspired by this project. I hope you also try out the ink smushing technique that I shared. It's an added bonus and creates a really neat effect behind our shaker. If you're interested in any of the products that I use today, I have them all linked below in the video description or on my blog. You can check out the entire December release from Simon's The Stamp for December. December is a celebration of die cutting all month long. Simon's got some really cool surprises coming up over the course of the month, so stay tuned for that. I can't wait to come back and share more with you all. But until I do, I hope you have a fabulous day and thanks so much for watching.